This conference will now be recorded. The podium, um, the town will put on its evidence, uh, any witnesses it has. You will then, once, once the town puts on its case, have a chance to respond, present any evidence you have, put on in, into the record anything you'd like me to consider. Um, at the end of that back and forth, I'll make a final ruling and you will get an order in the mail. Um, first order of business is anybody who's going to testify today on any of the cases on the agenda, if you could stand and raise your right hands for me and I'll swear you in. Thank you. Do you all swear from the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? What? Okay, thank you. Um, before we get to the actual cases, I will let the record reflect that I have approved uh, the October 4th, 2022 minutes with two minor uh, modifications to the first cases listed that were continued to today, just notating the uh, date of today's hearing on the order, or excuse me, in the minutes. Uh, with that, I'll turn it over to the town for the case presentations. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Christy Gunn on behalf of uh, the town of Ocean Ridge. Your Honor, the first case on today's agenda is case number 2022-011. The property address is 6080 Old Ocean Boulevard in the town of Ocean Ridge. Property owner listed with property appraiser is Spitty Trust uh, with Daniel Baruch as the trustee. This case was commenced July 1st of 2022. Uh, regarding the violation of section 34-162 obstructions and encroachments of the right-of-way. Um, we have our building official, Durani Guy, here to testify. And the city, the town is seeking costs of $209.88 in this case. Mr. Guy, can we provide the background on this case? Yes, thank you, Tom. Uh, Christy, good morning, Your Honor. Morning, everybody. Uh, you want to turn your mic on hot? Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. So uh, this case uh, is connected to a previous code enforcement case, 2021-02, uh, which was a work without permit citation uh, for the placement of columns uh, with, ele with electric. Uh, ultimately, um, permits were um, applied for and um, during the inspection process we realized that the columns were actually sitting in the town's right of way. We asked the um, homeowner um, to provide us with a survey uh, delineating their property um, boundaries, because this was in question. Apparently, the drawing uh, of the layout of the site that was sent to us during permitting appeared not to be correct. And when we got the revised um, uh, survey, it was clear that the columns were indeed outside of the um, property. Um, eventually, the uh, clients applied for a right-of-way use application through the town manager, um, Tracy Stevens at the time, and uh, Tracy Stevens made a determination on March 23 of this year, and I'll quote what she said. Um, <clears throat> the right-of-way on North Ocean Boulevard belongs no, the construction of the columns can reasonably be accomplished on the property without use, utilizing the town's right of way. Please remove the columns, hedges, and any other vegetation, as well as any fence material that is currently located in the town's right of way. Uh, eventually, the uh, columns were removed. However, the hedges uh, remain in place. Uh, so before you go on, where, where were the columns in relation to that photo there? Were they right at the edge of the, of the that, hedges? That's actually the, the column which is now gone. Right, but the next photo down, scroll down a little bit. Um, so this recent photo, I'm not certain if the column is there or not, but you can see the whole thing in there. So the columns will be inside the opening that's down there? That's the okay. columns would have okay. been uh, right there. Okay, so the columns are gone, but the hedges so the columns, are still right. there. So, but the hedges are still there. Um, on May 9th, um, Correspondence was sent to the uh, contractor of record uh, that uh, 
the use of that area was denied and that the hedges are required to be removed as well because they do uh, pose a hazard to uh, traffic in that area. Um, they were not moved. I do believe we had reached out um, and we were told that they were having difficulties uh, securing a landscape company that could uh, remove that, the hedges at that time. And um, since then, it has not been uh, removed. Um, we followed up uh, with a, a notice at the, well, that brought us to the previous um, meeting a month ago. And uh, this morning, I went and um, did a uh, survey of the site and I took pictures and the hedges are still uh, within the town's right. Do we have a respondent here on behalf of this case? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. If you could come and give me your appearances. Good morning. Phil Warner on behalf of the respondents. Your last name was Warner? Sure. Warner, W-E-R-N-E-R. -E -E Warner, thank you. Um, so we admit that the hedges are in the right of way. Uh, we are willing to trim them back. Uh, Two other homes, uh, 6102 and 6029, uh, were both just recently told that they were to trim their hedges that are in a similar situation that are also encroaching the right of way. Um, and we feel that because they were trimmed or told to trim them back, that we should also be allowed to trim ours back. Um, we think that removal is inappropriate and unfair. Um, and we think that if the town is going to require uh, us to remove our bushes, then they should require everyone to remove the bushes instead of doing it in a piecemeal fashion. Okay. And so if I could have the building official, if we're looking at that photo and you can see the photos, so we're only talking about that line there. So they only have to cut the portion. You're only asking for them to cut the portion or remove the portion that's in the, the road right of way. So the part of the hedge that goes up into the property line Yes. is sufficient. How far back from the roadway does the right-of-way go? Well, um, I'm actually flipping through. Do we have a, <clears throat> a aerial photograph or, um, well, that was the purpose. Okay. I guess the new location of the columns would presumably be so, outside of the right-of-way, is that right? right? So the last um, exhibit uh, on page 37, if you could pull that up. Package page 37. Yeah. Oh, I have 37 on my way. Maybe page 37 has that. Um, I have to go back. Uh, there it is. It's a different number on this one. <clears throat> one down, please. That, that above, by the way, that was the drawing that was submitted to the town um, for permitting. But this also is a good picture, right? So we see where Old Ocean Boulevard is. And this actually clearly properly shows the property line. So where the CL is located on um, the drawing to the uh, right edge of that drawing, that CL is where the line of hedges are. Uh, if you see the, the, the two rectangles at the bottom, and you recall from the previous pictures, those are the two FPL boxes that we had seen from uh, a picture looking north. So the line of hedges is along the, the CL, right along there. So uh, based on that, they seem to be approximately, could we zoom that up some more? If my eyes were correct, that, that looks like about 20 feet outside of the property line, uh, approximately, where those hedges are. So where the CL is along the side, that is where the hedges uh, sit currently. All right, and I guess um, before we get too much further, if we could, Madam Clerk, if you could scroll through the documents, so what you're looking at is the evidentiary case file that the town would like to enter into evidence. If you could start from the beginning and just kind of slowly scroll through those.
the town attorney, if you want to walk him through these, I guess. Right, so um, the case begins with, uh, I believe, our notice of violation uh, that was issued to the property owner. Scrolling down from that is the affidavit of service. Then that's the code section. This is property appraiser information. Then we have uh, the comment sheet on the permits, photographs of the property. Then we have the certified mailing receipt, further photographs of the property, the copy of posting at the property, the right of way use application that was submitted to the former town manager. And I believe it includes her response uh, to the property owner denying the request and asking them to remove the uh, vegetation, the hedges. There's a hold harmless agreement that we require if you're allowed to have an obstruction in the right of way. That's what that copy is. Letter from, I believe, the applicant. That was the initial survey submitted with the building permit, then the corrected survey, then a continuation of the hearing from October 4th to today's hearing, returned mail, copy of posting of the continuance, or photographs of the property with the posting, photographs from this morning of the hedges of the property, and then today's cost sheet for the town. And the rest is the next case. Okay, so do you have any objection to those documents? No, ma'am. Thank you. So with that, I'll enter into the record composite exhibit one without objection. And Madam Clerk, if you could go back to that survey. So the town's position is that the, the landscaping cannot be in the right of way. Yes, Your Honor. It does create a uh, traffic hazard at this time. It's a very restricted, very small road. And um, it, it, I believe the picture that I showed today shows um, citizens using the street. It's very close to a very blind corner. And it does create a hazard. Uh, we've gotten many complaints about um, this situation and that street. And the town is actually actively moving um, to correct not just this property, but all the properties that are in violation. Letters have been sent to all the residents, um, encouraging them to uh, address these issues. So the town is working on that and is dealing with life safety along the street. Thank you. And town attorney, what was the town's remedy that you're seeking this morning? The recommendation. Yes, ma'am. It's um, since we've been dealing with this for some time, the recommendation is $250 per day with compliance within 30 days. So if not comply within 30 days, then we would recommend a fine amount of $250 a day. And then the town's cost of $209.88. Um, Mr. Guy, as to the other properties that were mentioned, uh, 6102 and 6029, um, are you aware of what the town has advised those property owners regarding their hedges? I do not um, have any um, knowledge about specific um, instructions that were given um, to any specific properties. We generally sent out a letter to all the properties up and down. Uh, old ocean asking them to uh, keep the area clear for life safety purposes. There was a, a huge campaign uh, beginning last year and this year to actually move hedges back uh, along the entirety 
of whole ocean boulevard i don't believe that we had uh, made any uh, specific or carved out any um, specifics for any specific property uh, again it might have happened without my knowledge but i'm not personally aware of that sir your response to the additional testimony of the town uh, we've seen no evidence that they have sent out such letters um, both of my clients are here and are willing to testify that they've spoken to numerous neighbors who have uh, received no such um, acknowledgement that they have to move their bushes back. Um, and also their neighbors have contested that um, they feel that it's inappropriate. They also feel that it's inappropriate that the bushes be moved back. We're simply asking that they be trimmed um, out of the right of way. Uh, we understand that the town values safety um, and views keeping the uh, right of way that is the proper way to do that. and trimming the bushes we feel is sufficient to accomplish that. When you say trim the bushes, let me make sure I understand though, to remove them from the right of way requires you to remove them from the right of way. Trimming them down in height doesn't remove them from the right of way, correct? Let me let me clarify, I mean trim them back, not um, not just, so if the hedge is like this, cutting them back, not cutting them down. Does that does that help you? Right, so you're, you are agreeing to remove them from the right of way, in uh, essence. So, I think there's been a couple cross wires as far as the um, removal. Our understanding is that the town wishes for us to put, take the bushes out and move them back three feet. Is that a correct um, assessment? The, the, the previous correspondence was to just remove the hedges from the right of way. However you choose to do that, if you want to move the hedges back onto the property, the town doesn't really care how you do it. It's just having the right of way be clear. So our issue with moving them all the way out of the right of way is that will interfere with our ability to park on the property. Um, currently, we are required to use part of it. You can go to, uh, I think, down three slides um, to show the picture. Um, I think it's a few more than three, actually. There's one that'll help um, show it. A little further down. That one will do. Um, so as you can see, currently we're required to park, and I believe that's the right of way as well, um, in the right of way to avoid being in the street. Our driveway is very narrow and doesn't allow very much parking. Um, so if we move the bushes to where, approximately where that car is sitting, uh, we lose several valuable parking spots. Um, my clients purchased the home because of the ample parking. Uh, we, don't, we don't think it's appropriate for us to sacrifice our parking spots as well. Does your client have a permit for parking in the right of way? I don't believe so. Okay. Is there parking in the front of the structure? You mean in front of the home itself? Yeah. There is a very narrow driveway that doesn't allow um, adequate parking. And have you pursued parking on the area where your current driveway is at the rear of the property? That also does not provide um, sufficient uh, parking. We have five drivers that park at the house, um, and so it, it, there just simply isn't enough space at the back of the house. Have you pursued expanding the driveway at the rear of the house? We've pursued um, expanding the driveway at the front of the house. Um, I believe we are currently uh, in the process of obtaining um, a contractor to do that. There's septic field issues. And there are also septic field issues um, approximately 10 feet uh, back from the uh, road. So that also impedes um, a lot of the work that we would like to do. We can't change it at all. The subject feels in the way, and we can't change it at all. Um, Mr. Guy, uh, from your understanding, would they be able to still park on the right of way if they remove those hedges back? Uh, town attorney, um, the answer is no. The town does not allow parking in the right of way, and I'm not aware of any. Um, agreement that was uh, made by the town to allow for parking of, uh, in the right of way. Uh, as we understand it, whenever we do review of um, a property, and I believe this house is under 20 years old, that they actually do have internal garage spaces on site parking, as well as, as you, as you can see, there is a large enough driveway, um, and they have a driveway both in the front and in the rear. So, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not sure where an agreement came from that they were allowed to park there at any time. I'm not aware of that. May I speak into that? Yeah, if you could come into the to the podium so that the record picks you up, the, excuse me, the recording. Absolutely. 
And your name for the record, ma'am? Um, my name is Nicole Crank. I'm one of the property owners. Thank the you, ma'am. The reason our property is under a different name is we are um, victims of violent crime. So we keep our name off of the registry. Okay, thank you. Um, with the parking spaces, the original plans for the home do show that parking space that were approved by the city back when it was built almost 17 years ago. And those shrubs have been in that entire time. So these are not shrubs that we did plant. All of this has been existing for about 17 years since the house has existed. So when we purchased the house three years ago, that and the columns existed as well. The problem with the column is it was starting to lean and we had one runner especially who would come and put his legs on it and stretch every day and we were concerned he was going to get injured. We were also wanting to uh, put fencing on the, the back side of the shrubs and install a gate because we have a two-year-old a two-year-old in our home and a Doberman dog so we wanted to keep the dogs and the babies inside. Mm -hmm. um, this part of Old Ocean is on the one-way portion and we're, the, we're one of those like weird six houses that you have two front yards, you have no backyard. So that's why we were looking to fence and gate. So I think that's what started all of this. I would like to formally apologize. We're from St. Louis and in St. Louis it's contract labor. So everyone, all the contractors are union and they always get the permits. So we, when we hired professional contractors for the first time outside of a condo in Florida, we thought they were getting the permits. So when they didn't get the permits, we were very surprised. Mm -hmm. I think what tipped it off was the fence person got the permits and it brought everything to light. So we do want to apologize for that. We were not trying to do anything outside of scope. We just thought it was being taken care of. We also apologize. The survey that we got when we purchased the home in the plans uh, shows that does not show the right of way. When Mr. Guy asked us to get another survey, we used a different company, we used Baseline. They give us the, the survey that's in here. The first survey that's in here doesn't show the right of way. So we thought we were okay with the existing parking spots, the existing shrubs, and two surveys that said the exact same thing. Again, we were not trying to anger anybody or do anything wrong. We had two surveys that said the same thing. When the town asked for a third survey, we were confused. We didn't understand, but we just did it. We got the third survey, again, from Baseline, the same company that provided us the, the first survey. Okay. I didn't even look at it because I'm like, okay, we paid another $900 for a survey, turned it in, and sure enough, it's different. And that's when we first started understanding what, what's happening. We were very confused at that point in time. What's happening here? What is the right of way? Um, I have numerous pictures taken daily when we are in town. We live back and forth almost every other week. Um, our neighbors all the time park in their driveways in the right of way. They're parked there today, even in the circle driveways. Um, our neighbor to the north side parks in that space that every day that they're in town. Um, they rented out that property for 10 years to John. John parked in that space every single day. Um, so our neighbors park in the right of way every single day, mostly because there's no there's no space, but no one is sighted. Um, and you Noah know, Dina, who was just asked to trim her shrubs back, not remove them, um, she was just asked to trim her shrubs and parks in the right of way all the time because she has to. John Simone, who was just asked to trim his shrubs, he trimmed the shrubs, but the thing is, there are three palm trees and a banyan tree. Literally, I've got pictures and video from today on the road and going over the road. Two of the palm trees are super scarred because people keep hitting them because they're on the road. I mean, they're gorgeous. We don't want them removed. But our flexible shrubs that we are not on the blind corner, that's John's property. So they, there's a property before ours. But all the way up the street, up to that corner, both sides of the street, everything is to the street. Almost on our street, most properties have vegetation to the street. So we are not, and I've, I've got pictures and videos I brought if you'd like to see it. So we're not unusual, we're actually normal. And our vegetation has to be, happens to be flexible, flexible vegetation, not bricks, not retaining walls, not palm trees, and not banyan trees, which several of our neighbors have, including fencing and mailboxes, et cetera. Okay, thank you. And then the septic field in the home, I also had the, those pictures with me of those plans. If we try to move those parking spots back, we just don't have any space. That septic field almost goes up to those parking spaces. So with five cars, we can fit four max in the back. We can fit 
a two to three max in the front. So if we have one babysitter, one guest, one contractor, now we're trying to park in the street street, which that is a, a real hazard. So um, we're trying to make it so that we don't create a real hazard and that we, we're just doing the same thing as everybody else, especially on the one-way portion of the street that we live on, which is a little different than the two-way portion, which gets abundance more traffic. I would say we have much, much more people traffic than we do vehicle traffic. We have very, very little vehicle traffic. Okay. With a two-year-old and a, a, a dog, dogs with, I have a three-pound Yorkie, or a Pomeranian too, with dogs and a kid, we, we're aware of vehicle traffic. Yeah. <laughs> no fence, no gates. Right. Okay. So how many spaces are you, do you think you can get in the front? Well, that driveway is really one wide car. So if you kind of park, if you, well, and it depends on what you call the front. That's on North Ocean Boulevard. Okay, so North Ocean. That's really kind of, so if we put our Escalade up there, it really kind of takes up the driveway. There's this one other parking spot there. Mm -hmm. um, you can kind of jimmy another car in this way if the Escalade is in the driveway, and that's what I'm calling a third, but it's Caddy Wampus. So are you guys, you guys are planning though to submit to expand the driveway in the front? No, ma'am. There's really there's a big banyan tree in the front and then the house. So there's really no space to the front yard. There's we have about 10 feet of grass in the front yard. There's really not a lot of space there. Um, if we do, if we the subject field wasn't in the way and we moved all that back, we'd only have about 10 feet of grass in the backyard too. Right. The, the there's how did that brick driveway get in the on no, old ocean? There's no permits. For that driveway, is that correct? Uh, Mr. Guy, have you looked at that issue in the past? So, um, based on the drawings for the um, the home, two planters, two potted plants were allowed um, in the right of way. That is what was initially allowed on was included in the plant. There was no um, side parking. There was no hedges in the right of way. Those happened over the time. I but I can tell the you what was there. the original plans for the home showed two planters. There were no columns, uh, permanent columns um, permitted with the original drawings. Was the was the paper, was the brick driveway the two parking spaces were no, they on the original? There was an apron. Um, Just from the roadway. And, and and on the side of each uh, the driveway there was a, a, a showing a planter and it clearly said planter. Can you can you go to page thirty six of the two plans that are there? This is twenty twenty one though. Yeah, go, go keep going. Must not be that. It says PDF page thirty six, but it's the drawings. Yeah, there. Next one down. So that's the that's the current survey, right? So Mr. Guy, on the right side of that photo, that those those parking spaces and the and the brick driveway is out that's outside of the property line. Those are not on the approved plans for the house. I don't recall them being. I'm actually looking to see if I can put it up on my um, laptop. Okay. We were. I was just emailing them yesterday uh, with the septic field, so that's why we had the plans out yesterday. Okay. So I know I have them on my phone somewhere. I just have to find them. So I guess from the town's perspective, I understand the position on the landscaping, but what's the position on the on the parking spaces? I know that there's testimony on the record from the town attorney that that. They're not allowed to park in those spaces, but is the town requesting that they remove those that brick parking area from the right of way? We are not requiring that they remove the, the brick parking. Um, we actually have um, drainage issues on the road, and that is not that is not a contention at this time. What we're concerned about are the hedges, um, the pollution hedges that are there that make the road even more narrow and very dangerous when um, vehicles pass pedestrians on that road. And we're totally willing, if we can keep the parking spaces and just move the hedges to the other side of the parking spaces, that's fine with the septic field. We're working with Bob from Delray Landscaping, so he does like tons of work on our road. He, all of our, that's who all of our neighbors use. He said he can get it done by December 15th. He can move the hedges by December 15th. 
he was, we were actually cha getting challenged with him because he said he wouldn't do it because he told us it was unfair. He called Mr. Pugh and somebody named Susan. I don't know a couple people he says he knows. But while we were, while I was calling him, asking him to move our hedges back, he was in the process of a city permitted project about eight houses up from ours to plant. And I took the video within three feet of the street, um, on the street. So he's like, no, I'm not taking your, this is what Bob said. He said, I'm not taking your hedges out while I'm planting the exact same thing right up the street with the city's approval. So Bob and I had our conversation. I got him on board. <laughs> um, but he would move, we can move the hedges. We're totally okay moving the hedges to the other side of the parking spots. It's just moving the parking spots. We don't have anywhere else to put them. Okay. Do, do you know the address of what uh, Bob was talking about? Um, it's the new house that had all of the... the so I, I think, and Mr. Guy can probably speak to that. I think we've had some, some issues with that and they have been advised that they can't have plantings in the right of way. Um, Mr. Guy, do you know which property she's talking about? Uh, I do not know, but without a right of way um, consent, we do not allow any plantings in the right of way. Yeah, the, the code is, is pretty clear here that you, you can't put anything in the right of way. Um, and if, if you do, it's because it's declared a public nuisance and the town can actually come and take it out. Can I share this? This is one of the drawings that was submitted with the house. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead and show it to the town attorney first. Okay, Mr. Guy is pulling up, I think he's pulling up the official building record, so he'll have what uh, was officially submitted uh, with that. Let me see that, ma'am, before you go to the podium. Oh, yeah, sorry, hold on, let me find it again. Because um, this is septic field and... There's the one that denotes the papers in the planting plan that was in the blueprints. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And Mr. Guy, let me know if you find what you're looking for. What does that say? Flush a flush planter cutouts. Right. But it doesn't say what's what's gonna be in there. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say okay. it's a driveway, it doesn't show it as being paved. If you go through if you could show down, show that to them as I've well. I've got that page too, about can you go about three pages down. Do you get, are these the blueprints? Can you just scroll a couple more pages? Scroll again. There you go. That's it. That's I think that's the one that denotes the papers. Let me check me playing with technology next. Um, see, so this is the one before it, and this is the one it says pavers. So it's the drawing. Okay, so keep going. I think it's the next one. Oh, one more. One more. Okay, we'll go the other way. Sorry. I'm not sure which way I took the pictures. Go the other way. Go up again. Yeah, that's the one that talks about the pavers and denotes the parking spots right there. Can I see so understand picture, but I don't see that. Yeah, I don't see papers on, there's papers on the, that looks like the other side of your property though, right? Over Man. here. 
Yeah. Turn it so she can see it. Because uh, we're talking about on that side. So right? this is, they drew this and denoted it pavers. Yeah, okay. And all of that area okay. is pavers. Okay. And that's where it says pavers right there. Yeah, okay. But it, it, at any rate, the town's not asking for them to remove the pavers at this point. It's just about the, the landscaping. So anything further from the town? Uh, Your Honor, it is just about moving those hedges back at this point. I mean, obviously we've got to address, you know, the parking issue, um, but that's all we're asking to be done. So um, I'm not sure if Bob can do this in 30 days, or do you need a little bit more time for? I have an email from him saying that he could have it done by December 15th. Could we get approval to park? Having the papers there, but not being allowed to park there is still kind of. I think perhaps one step at a time. Yeah, so I'm the, what's before me and what was on the notices and what's, what's in the record is, is just having to do with the landscaping. So you'll need to work with the town outside of this code enforcement process with regard to the parking and the papers. Um, the only thing I'm going to rule on here this morning is is the landscaping. Um, if if they have Bob that can get it done by December 15, then the town would recommend 60 days. So January 1st would be acceptable yeah, to, to, to make sure you, you get it done. Um, I don't believe, Mr. Guy, that a permit is required for any of that to move those hedges back. No, no permit is required to move the hedges or if you choose to replant them on your property, no permit is required. Okay, so we would recommend then 60 days to do that, and then obviously we can address, you know, the, the parking issue and go from there on that. Can I ask a quick question about replacing? Sure, just come up here so that the, the recording picks you up. And replacing that, would you guys like us to put sod there, or would you like us to brick up to the street for the aesthetic? Brick up to the street? Or I think that the preference sense. would be sod, because then if you're going to plant anything else, we'd have to do it. Right away permit. Right. So or we could brick straight up. Like a lot of the neighbors, their brick goes straight up to the street. Yeah, Mr. Guy, you have thoughts on that? Um, and this is from a conversation with our uh, own town manager that um, we didn't want him to affect the area negatively. However, the, the, the code requirement for the town is that the area adjacent to your property be grass. So that would be the preferable material, not to increase a nonconformity by adding more, adding more okay. there. So my order won't speak to that, but deal with the deal with the town on that after you remove the landscaping. Um, and then as you say, make make sure that you're complying with the other portions of the town code. So any objection to that January 1st deadline? That seems like the town is giving you ample time to do it and we'll meet your contractor's timeline. Yeah, no, no, no objection to that at all. Would it just it will specify that we're not being asked to move the pavers, right? It'll just specify that we're asking to move the vegetation. I'm fine with putting that in the order. Um, you know, we're going to obviously have to talk about it internally, and if there is some objection, we'll reach out to you and, and discuss what our objection is and okay. how we can go from there. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, ma'am. Anything further from you, sir? No, ma'am. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, hearing all of that, uh, in case 2022-011, I will find that based on the testimony of town staff, as well as the evidentiary case file that's been put into the record, as well as the testimony of the respondent and her counsel, that there is in fact a violation of section 34-162 of the town's code, with uh, specifically with regard to the uh, hedge that is in the right of way. I will require that the respondents comply with section 34-162 by removing that hedge from the right of way on or before January 1st, 2023. Um, the way that the town's code enforcement or code compliance works is you don't come back here. If you don't comply by January 1st, the fine starts running on January 2nd if you're not complied. So um, when that time comes, make sure you get what's called an affidavit of compliance from the, from the town, from the building official, showing that you're in compliance so that there's no issue about fines uh, going forward. As I said, and, and as uh, I will issue in my order, if you do not comply by January 1st, 2023, I will start a fine of $250 per day until you achieve compliance with the town's code. Uh, the town is also, based on my finding a violation, entitled to their administrative costs, so I will assess those in the amount of $209.88 uh, for today's hearing payable within 30 days. And you'll get all of this in a written order that the town will send to you uh, via mail. It does look like some mail bounces back, so you may want to get with the town if you have a change of address, um, they're legally required to send it to the property appraiser's address. So if you have an alternate address, you may want to get with them and let them know. Um, but an address from your attorney, that will work too. Okay, perfect. 
Yep, just so you're getting notices, it looks like stuff is uh, bouncing back. And if I didn't, on the record, I will find, um, based on the evidence in the case file, that there is good and sufficient notice for this morning's hearing based on a post thing. Thank you all for attending. Thank you. Back to you, Madam Town Attorney. All right, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Your Honor, the next case, um, let's see, is uh, the property involved is at 23 Coconut Lane. This is case number, Madam Clerk, do you know the case number? It's 2022-12, I believe. Thank you. Um, the, according to the property appraiser's office, the property owner is James Cooksey. And uh, this case was initiated on August 12th of 2022. Uh, the property was cited for a violation of code section 67-174 uh, for failure to um, maintain the property consistent with the maintenance and appearance standards in the town's code. Um, we have our building official, Duraney Guy, here to testify on behalf of the town. Thank you, Madam Town Attorney. Uh, Your Honor, um, this case was actually initiated by um, our code enforcement officer, Robert McAllister, who's actually not, uh, he's not available at the moment. However, um, we have his documentation here where he had um, actually written a, um, a citation. I think this was a, a notice. Um, for maintenance issues. Um, and actually, afterwards, um, we actually, myself and him, spoke with Mr. Cooksey. And um, at length, he explained to us that he had um, significant plans to do an overall renovation of the property, the interior, and, and do a huge upgrade. And he was actually in the process of compiling permits and working with a, um, an architect. Um, to get all that work done. And we advised them that, however, while all that is going on, we still need to maintain the property. Um, and we also noticed them uh, prior to the last meeting, and this you know, was continued to uh, this hearing today. And um, I took pictures this morning, and there is no significant improvement to the overall appearance of the property. It is generally in the same condition that it was observed back in uh, August of this year. Thank you. Sir, are you here on behalf of this case? Sir? No, I'm not. You're not? Okay. Is anybody here on behalf of this case? Okay. No. Seeing none, we'll let the record reflect that the respondents are not present. So what is the town seeking today? Um, Your Honor, in this case, uh, since it's been gone since August, the recommendation is 30 days to come into compliance, failing which a fine of 150 per day thereafter. And this was written as a civil citation, is that that's correct? That's correct. That's how it was initially started, and the citation was posted at the property. And then, as you can see from the evidence in the file, we actually mailed out the a notice of violation and notice of hearing, which was then continued um, from the October meeting to today's meeting because uh, we just wanted to make sure we provided sufficient notice to the property owner to attend, and that obviously hasn't happened. It didn't work. It didn't work. <laughs> All right, let me just scroll through these. So you're not actually seeking to enforce this civil citation. You sent a separate notice of violation. Yes, sir. Okay, so the civil citation is just exactly. additional evidence. Okay. Okay, let me just look at the notice. And Madam Clerk, are we we're not receiving back any of the mailings. No. Have we received anything that they've been claimed? The first one we did, the second one we have not. Okay. And just, can you walk me through the photos? What, what you're, I mean, I see that there's a lot going on there, but what, what specifically are you? Right, so what we asked, and we, I mean, we spoke to him and kind of tried to break it down. If you can notice uh, that one of these, especially along that side, you can see, you know, the, Properties overgrown, 
Um, the grass is um, maybe at least 12 inches tall. Uh, there's grass in the driveway growing up and outside of the property as well. It's overgrown and not yet. And uh, we literally just asked them, we understand what you're doing. We know you want to do your work, but in the meantime, you know, we have to keep up the, the overall appearance of the property, you know, um, to improve the overall appearance of the community in general. Um, and he agreed um, that he was going to get someone to come up and um, address that. But again, if he did, I don't see any significant change to um, the um, standard of the property back in April and to today. To today, yeah, today's photos look eerily similar. Okay. And you did personally speak with the respondent at some point? Yes. Okay. I said that officer. And the town is seeking its costs, it looks like 209.46. Yes, Your Honor. And you said $150 per day? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Anything further from the town? Not this time, Your Honor. Okay, with that, I'll enter into the record a composite exhibit one. And in case 2022-012, I find that based on the evidence in the record, as well as the testimony of town staff, that there's good and sufficient notice for this morning's hearing. And based on the photographs and testimony of the building official, that there is in fact a violation of section 67-174 uh, regarding the maintenance and appearance standards, which are being violated uh, based on the photographs in the record. I'll require the, the respondent to comply with section 67-160 excuse me, 67-174 on or before December 1st, 2022. And if compliance is not achieved by that time, a fine of $150 per day will begin to accrue until compliance is achieved. And based on the finding of violation, I'll award the town its administrative costs in the amount of 209.46 payable within 30 days of the date of the order. And again, for the record, I'll reflect that the respondent is not present at today's hearing. Thank you, Ryan. Seeing nothing further on the agenda, is there anything else this morning? No, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. We'll stand adjourned at 1047. Thank you. Thank you.